Tony Sieber and Rethink X have just shared some information that is truly staggering. The numbers are unbelievable. It shows the fastest growing anything of any kind worldwide is actually battery storage. And I'm talking battery storage for solar and wind. Battery storage is growing at an incredible pace. Any company in this market could make billions of dollars over the next decade because this growth in battery storage is going to skyrocket. How can it skyrocket? From, I mean, how can it skyrocket when it's already skyrocketing, when it's already increased so much? Well, there are some key reasons why, but here are the details. Here's what Tony Sieber and Rethink X have just revealed, and here's why this information is incredibly important. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. I'm about to get some batteries installed here at my home to complement my 56 solar panels, 56 here on the roof, which is about 26 kilowatts of solar panels in total. That together could potentially charge two electric cars from zero to full in a day, which is incredible. But here's really what's going on. That is globally, the cost of solar and batteries together are now significantly cheaper than any other form of energy. Solar and batteries is the cheapest form of energy combined. Now in the past, a lot of the naysayers would say, yeah, yeah, solar panels, they're cheaper, sure, than coal or gas power stations. But I mean, you can't have solar without batteries. And really, I guess they were kind of right. But now that argument is completely moot because in Germany, we have the numbers. And in Germany, to be honest, solar is not all that great considering uh, they don't get as much sun there as most of the rest of the world. But we now know that solar and batteries are cheaper than fossil power plants. And that's one of the key reasons why batteries are being installed at the fastest pace in history. When I say the fastest pace though, it's kind of like Usain Bolt versus me. I mean, the pace of deployment of batteries is incredible. Taylor Hines says for Rethink X that by 2030, it will be both physically possible and economically affordable to meet 100% of electricity demand worldwide with a combination of solar, wind and batteries. That's across the entire United States as well as most other populated regions of the world. 90%, I should add, 90% of the world lives on the Sun Belt. So solar, wind and batteries will work unquestionably for at least 90% of the world as the only source of energy in those places. Unsubsidized solar and wind power are already the cheapest source of electricity in most regions around the world. And as a result, we have seen exponential growth and mass adoption of these generational technologies. But what about batteries? Well, as you know, Tesla just, well, Tesla's not really growing as a car company, a little bit, but not really. But where they are growing is battery deployments. In fact, Tesla had to sell 100 cars for every mega pack they sell. 100 cars for a single mega pack. You know how many mega packs Tesla deploy in some battery, in some of the battery projects Tesla are working on, they'll deploy Hundreds, I'm talking like three, four hundred mega packs. So Tesla are making a lot of money from this transition. In an SWB system, so batteries are indispensable. While solar and wind offer numerous advantages, scalable technologies that produce abundant, cheap, clean electricity, their biggest challenge is intermittency. When the sun doesn't shine or the wind doesn't blow, no electricity is generated. Now, Rethink X made that quote, but I think you'd, if you actually said to them, is that true? They'd say, no, that's actually not, it's not true at all. When the wind doesn't blow, yes, it's true, a wind turbine doesn't create energy, but when the sun doesn't shine, solar panels still produce a shit ton of energy. Mind my French guys, but um, the truth is they do. My solar panels today produced 50% of their operational capacity, even though there was no sun today. Cloud cover the entire day. Solar panels have improved enormously at actually converting light into electricity. So now, intermittency, it's not as much of a problem as it used to be for solar. But of course, when there's no sun at all, as in it's nighttime, yeah, that's when solar definitely needs batteries. On their own, solar and wind cannot meet 100% of energy demand worldwide, as there would inevitably be periods when energy production falls short of societal needs. That may not actually be true though, because when the world entirely moves to electric cars, and we have 
EVs, electric cars with vehicle to grid, Tesla cars next year, Tesla have said will have vehicle to grid. And in fact, they already have vehicle to grid built in. It just hasn't been turned on. But when we're all driving around with EVs, electric cars, with vehicle to grid, then this may no longer be the case. We may actually be able to be entirely de independent from grids, or at least a large percentage of the world's population may be able to. But for the present time, batteries are needed, and they change the equation when it comes to renewables. In an energy system, batteries perform several important functions. They balance the intermittency of renewables. Storing excess energy during periods of produ high production, sunny days, windy times, and releasing it during periods of low production or high demand. This ensures a consistent and reliable energy supply over longer time frames, typically hours to days or weeks, to smooth out the inherent variability of renewable sources. Backup power and resiliency. Batteries are also needed for this. They provide immediate backup power during outages or in the case of an emergency. Grid stabilization and peaking is also where batteries are needed, delivering fast response power to balance short-term fluctuations between supply and demand, particularly meeting high demand during peak periods, a function usually met by fossil fuel powered peaker plants. Following an influx of battery installations over the past few years, we have seen these benefits in action in the regions that have adopted them. In August in Texas this year, residents were not asked to conserve energy as they usually are, despite scorching heat waves and record energy demand to run air conditioners. Increased solar and wind generation capacity ensured that there was enough energy generated to support increased demand from air conditioners while increased battery capacity meant this supply was not interrupted when the sun went down in the evenings. As a result, Texas has seen just how incredibly well renewables are working, and they're investing more into renewables than any other state in America. In fact, by a factor of four. During a similar heat wave in California in September, the extreme heat reduced the amount of energy that could be generated from natural gas plants. At the same time, that wildfires inhibited power imports and electricity transfers from other states. Thanks to the new grid scale battery capacity, there was no emergency declared and electricity prices remained stable throughout the period of much higher increased energy demand. So as you can see, California's installation of numerous huge mega batteries has not only helped it to deal with these kinds of emergencies but also now battery storage is the number one source of electricity between 6 and 10 pm which is the peak demand period grid scale batteries in 2023 how did they go well over the past few years there's been a huge increase in the amount of battery energy storage systems installed around the world especially at grid scale at grid scale batteries are now lasting far longer approximately twice as long as they used to thanks to them now being based predominantly on the technology of lithium ion phosphate batteries. Not only are these batteries much cheaper than ternary batteries, they are actually safer, they're less likely to catch fire, and they last much, much longer. These grid scale systems are batteries installed at the regional or country level to support the electricity that is currently being generated and distributed to households, businesses and industries by energy utilities. This electricity comes from all sources, renewable and or non-renewable, depending on the electricity mix of that area. At the end of 2023, the world had approximately 56 gigawatts slash 200 gigawatt hours of grid scale battery storage installed. That was up from only three gigawatt five years ago. So the world within five years went from three gigawatt of battery storage to 56 gigawatts. <laughs> that is beyond exponential. That is seriously incredible growth. 56 gigawatts refers to the power capacity of the batteries, the maximum amount of power that a battery can deliver at any instant point in time. But the 200 gigawatt hours refers to the energy capacity of the batteries. That's the total amount of energy the batteries can store and release over time. To put this in perspective, New York City uses around 50,000 gigawatt hours of electricity per year. 
This means that all the grid scale battery storage in the world in 2023 could only power New York City for a day and a half. Now you can see this chart here from the Energy Institute. It shows you the incredible increase in battery deployment worldwide. Something that clearly Tony Sieber and Rethink X predicted, and they were kind of laughed at because, I mean, look at how many batteries we had installed in 2014 when these predictions were made. Look how many batteries we had installed even in, say, 2021. The figure was minuscule. But suddenly these numbers have jumped up at a stratospheric pace. Now, these numbers for, you know, being able to power New York City for only a day and a half doesn't sound very impressive because it's small, but the growth is incredibly fast. Like other disruptive technologies, the adoption of batteries is exponential. We expect install capacity to increase rapidly and significantly over the 2020s and beyond, says RethinkX. Additionally, as we discovered, they say, in Rethinking Energy 2020 to 2030 report, I'll put a link to the report in the description below, we expect regions to build relatively more solar and wind generation capacity than battery capacity as they invest in solar, wind, and battery energy systems. So as probably almost every country worldwide has seen the report from Germany showing that solar and wind, or particularly solar combined with batteries, is now the cheapest source of energy worldwide, more countries will say, hang a minute, it's time for us to make this change. It's going to, it's going to save us a lot of money, not just in health costs, but also simply in pure economic terms. One of the key findings of the Rethinking Energy Report was the Clean Energy U-Curve, a concept that can be used to design an SWB system, or a solar, wind, and battery system. The logic behind the curve states that it makes more sense to overbuild cheap energy generating capacity so that you need less expensive energy storage to maintain 100% of electricity demand this not only significantly decreases the amount of batteries needed and the total cost of the system, but also results in a superpower, which is an abundance of energy, cheap, clean, and super abundant electricity. And really, the question then becomes not a case of scarcity. You know, where you're thinking to yourself, oh, what are we going to do when there's a, there's a blackout, when there's too many people coming home at 6 p.m. in the evening and it's a 40 degrees Celsius day, you know, it's a really hot day, what are we going to do? That never arises. The question then becomes one of, what are we going to do with all, all this abundant free energy? What will, we, what will we create? What can we make? So where are these batteries being deployed? Battery energy storage systems are a distributed and decentralized technology that are being deployed at all scales, from residential to commercial to grid scale, all around the world. And what this means is, you know, rather than being dependent on fossil fuels or coal or oil, instead of all that, a country can build its own batteries and then it simply generates its own electricity. So it's no longer dependent on other countries. And being dependent on other countries is a big problem because then what happens is there's all kinds of political decisions where you know they did this for us, therefore we need to do that for them. And this affects politics in a very, very negative way. But when a country is not dependent on other countries and geopolitics for its energy supply, it can run much more efficiently. Individuals, businesses, and energy utilities will build and deploy projects wherever they are needed at the capacity that best suits the use case energy demand, storage technology. Many are attached to solar or wind generation plants, but others are standalone energy storage facilities. You can see here where they're being deployed. Number one is China. Number two is the USA. Then you can see the United Kingdom and Australia are kind of leading the rest of the pack, followed by Germany, South Korea, and Japan. Some of these numbers, though, are to some degree misleading, because actually here in Australia, we're deploying an enormous amount of battery storage over the next few years. A lot of those projects just haven't quite been finished yet. One of them, one of the biggest in the world, is actually just right down the road from my house. So far, there are only two serious centers of grid scale battery energy storage deployment in the world. China, 27 gigawatts, and the United States, 16 gigawatts. These two countries are also home to most of the world's largest individual battery projects, many of which are now on the gigawatt hour scale in terms of energy capacity. Now, the United States numbers are a little bit misleading because actually 
more than half of those batteries that the United States has installed are actually in California. The largest system in the world right now is the Edwards and Sanborn Solar Plus Storage Project in California, completed in January of 2024. This battery system, which is co-located with solar power generation, has 875 megawatts of capacity and can supply a staggering 3.3 gigawatt hours of electricity. Some of the world's largest systems include Moss Landing Energy Storage Facility in California, the Gemini Solar Plus Storage in Nevada, Crimson Large Scale Battery Energy Storage System in California, Desert Peak Energy Storage in California, Ken Hard Solar Power Complex Station in South Africa, Top Jog Shared Energy Storage Station in China, the Lin County Yinhu New Energy Company, Mega Battery in Chandong in China. Then you can see again California, Oberon Solar and Storage, Sierra Estrella in Arizona, the Manatee Battery Energy Storage Center in Florida, the, the Baotang Energy Storage Station in Hong Kong, the Victorian Big Battery here in Victoria, Australia, and actually we have many batteries, more than 10 in fact, that are much bigger than that and are about to be installed or are in the process of being built here in Australia. The Hornsdale Power Reserve in South Australia, which used to be one, used to be the biggest in the world and was built by Tesla, and the Stocking Pelham Battery in the UK in England. Now, there's a lot of other batteries being built out. Many of them are much bigger than these ones I just listed. In fact, they're being built so fast that it's hard to keep track with the pace. The falling cost of lithium-ion batteries has been a major accelerator for the rapid adoption of energy storage over the past few years. This has largely been driven by China. It's been driven by things like rights law, but it's also been driven by the decline in cost of batteries in conjunction with a much higher energy density and very long warranties on these batteries. They're basically guaranteed now in some cases to run for 25 to 35 years. As rights law says, costs tend to decline as a function of cumulative production. China produces over 75% of the world's lithium ion batteries. 10 times more than the United States. And this year, it produced 33% more than last year. However, recent data shows that that growth rate is exploding. Last month, China actually built 47% more batteries than it did in the same month last year. Consumer electronics were initially the biggest market for lithium ion batteries, but now the explosion in EVs is creating the volume to drive the cost of energy storage down. In fact, since 2010, just over 10 years ago, the cost of lithium-ion batteries has fallen by around 90%. As a result, one terawatt hours of lithium-ion batteries were produced in 2023. Nearly 15% of those went to energy storage, with the majority of those batteries actually going into electric cars. Rethink X expects the energy storage portion to increase as the total production volume continues to go up. They also expect this cost trajectory to continue to 2030 and many decades beyond, as we see much more advanced batteries than what we currently use today. While lithium-ion batteries are currently the most popular choice of battery energy storage, the industry is moving towards other options, including things like sodium for battery storage and also molten salt and iron batteries. There are many, many options for energy storage though. The list is so big that really, to be honest, I could do hundreds of videos just on that topic alone. Several of the newly announced projects and some that have already been completed are moving away entirely from lithium ion. So another reason this is happening is, is because of policies. The push for battery storage in China has been largely led by the Chinese government, which is trying to reach a goal of 40 gigawatts installed by 2025. To achieve this goal, the Chinese government mandates the new construction of solar or wind must have battery storage constructed alongside it. This is uh, driving the increase, well, a massive, or well, part of what's driving a massive increase in batteries being installed in China. Governments at various levels have also introduced capacity rental fees, subsidies, and investment into battery technology research, which is encouraging further uptake. The United States, 
They are accelerating their efforts through the Inflation Reduction Act and other policies to challenge China's dominance. In fact, more money has been invested into the production of lithium-ion batteries by the United States over the last 12 months than that that's been installed invested in China. The United States has also passed orders to allow energy storage of various sizes to participate in wholesale energy markets. This makes them much more financially viable. Several states in the US have energy storage installation targets and have also introduced their own mandates and incentive programs like rebates, grants, and tax incentives to complement those from the federal government. What's truly incredible about all this though is the capacity we have for battery storage. As you can see, the world has far more solar and wind than we have batteries deployed. And what that means is a lot of the solar and wind that the world is currently generating is being completely wasted. What the industry calls curtailed, right? We call it curtailed because that's a kind of a nice word for just being wasted. And what this means is there is a tremendous opportunity for many, many countries, many states around the world to simply connect mega batteries to their existing solar and wind farms, which would allow them to turn off their fossil fuel power plants. Looking at the data from a per capita perspective, the four other largest adopters, Ireland, Australia, and the United Kingdom and Germany, do not have anywhere near as much total installed capacity as the United States and China. But the governments clearly recognize the transformative effect of battery storage as a part of solar, wind, and battery energy systems will have on the future of their countries. All four have a huge number of programs and regulations that support the uptake of batteries as part of their energy system. And it's part of the key reason why as well, that here in Australia, we're seeing so many batteries being deployed. Ireland tops the list due to a small population and a couple of large battery installations. The Irish government has recently published an electricity storage policy, a significant policy framework outlining key government actions to formalize the role and accelerate the growth of energy storage in Ireland's future energy system. It also has the AirGrid DS3 system, a commercial arrangement to allow battery storage systems to deliver grid services and generate revenue streams, which makes them much more financially viable. In Australia, 1.8 gigawatts has been deployed, but an additional 1.8 gigawatts will come online within the next 24 months. And the national energy market is allowing energy storage providers to trade electricity, which has driven the growth of grid scale storage. In fact, many of the batteries here have been deployed by Tesla on behalf of energy companies who are basically seeking to make money from the Australian energy system. A new capacity investment scheme invested by, in created by the government supports new investment in both battery energy storage and clean energy capacity across Australia. Australia also has a virtual power plant program in place, enabling households to sell their stored energy back to the grid during peak times. Several states offer direct subsidies for residential battery installations to support their extensive rooftop solar adoption and decentralized energy system. And what that means is actually, many more batteries will be deployed because of the enormous amount of solar we have. Here in Australia last week, more than 50% of the electricity being generated during the daytime actually was coming from rooftop solar. That's across the entire energy grid here for all of Australia. The United Kingdom with 3.6 gigawatts has recently reformed energy regulations to remove barriers to battery storage in an effort to increase deployment across the country. It's also shut down its last remaining coal power plant. Its capacity market and enhanced frequently frequency response programs reward energy storage providers for providing grid services. Germany, Australia, and the United States have significant and growing residential scale battery energy storage capacity installed that is not included in this data. So actually, the truth is, the amount of batteries that have been installed worldwide that you're seeing on this chart is understated because we don't actually have data for all the people who have Tesla power walls or the equivalent from other companies. So the amount of batteries that were installed over the last few years is actually significantly higher than what you're seeing here in these numbers. The global race for battery storage is heating up, but there are still far too many countries with little to no battery energy storage as of 2023. 
The future of energy lies in solar, wind, and batteries. Cheap, clean, and super abundant electricity, countries must act swiftly to remain competitive. Solar and wind are made viable by energy storage, and those who, who delay deploying this technology risk falling behind not only in energy security, but also in economic opportunities. With China and the United States leading the charge, the race is on. Nations must move quickly to build resilient solar, wind and battery systems or risk leaving all the advantages to the countries that are quicker to act. The future, it's cheap, clean and super abundant solar, wind and battery powered energy. If countries do not act swiftly to build battery storage, they will not remain competitive. If you think about this, right, if the cost of energy generation in one country is 50% lower than another, it gives that country a huge economic advantage. Now, Taylor Hines is a BSC research fellow, and I'll put a link to this article that he wrote from Rethink X in the description below. It's worth mentioning, this data does not include numbers from 2024. And in 2024, the deployment of batteries worldwide has grown once again at an exponential pace. What does the future hold? Honestly, I believe we're going to see continued exponential growth in this area. If you're looking for, for, for an area to invest in, if you're an institutional investor or just a mum and dad investor, this is definitely a place you'd be, you should be looking and taking very, very seriously. Thanks for watching.